Hello, guys. So welcome back to our recordings. So in this uh, recording, you know, we're going to finish PGD transistors. This is the last piece, in the crown, OK, which is, you know, the multi-stage uh, cascode amplifier. So we started common emitter, common emitter, multi-stage amplifier or cascaded amplifier. So there are two stages of common emitters, OK, and they are cascaded. So we called that, you know, uh, cascaded multi-stage common emitter amplifiers. Then we started or analyzed another type of interesting multi-stage amplifier, which is a common emitter with a common collector. Okay. So this is, you know, the last piece. Uh, and actually the masterpiece, because this is really a very interesting circuit. Okay. It's called the cascode amplifier. I know it's a little bit weird. The name itself is weird. Uh, but maybe because it's not, you know, have this, is, you know, common sense of, you know, a stage then delivers another stage in a very visual way or very vis visible and clear way. Maybe this is the reason that they just manipulate the name a little bit. Okay. So this multi stage amplifier is actually common emitter with common base. So we see common emitter, common emitter. We see common emitter, common base. Then now it's common uh, emitter, uh, I'm sorry, common emitter, common quantum. Then now it's common emitter, common base, okay? The advantage of such, you know, circuit is beyond the scope of this, this course. This is basically, you know, in short, will enhance the bandwidth of the circuit. So the gain is also dependent on the frequency of the input signal, the input sine wave or, or voice practically. Okay, so uh, so this circuit, this you know, uh, this circuit should or multi-stage cascode amplifier should enhance the bandwidth of the circuit. Okay, so uh, let's now you know try to analyze this circuit, analyze it in DC, and then EC. When we come to EC, we're gonna see really that it's really a multi-stage amplifier. We would we would see visually uh, a stage delivers another stage. The, uh, the output of the first stage is really the input of the second stage. That's why it's really still, you know, a multi-stage amplifier, but it will be very clear from the AC, not from the DC, okay? Also, indirectly, we're gonna see now, we can also have an idea that it's really, you know, uh, a stage delivering another stage from the DC as well, but it, it's not that clear like the AC. So let's do, uh, you know, this. So let's start by the DC analysis. Number one, DC analysis. Okay, so we said that we have a common emitter and a common base. Okay, so let's see how uh, you know this is happening. So we know that in the, in the common emitter, the input is at the base. And the output is at, uh, you know, the collector. The output is at the collector. And we know for common base, the input is at the emitter. And the output is at the collector as well. All the time, the sum, the, the terminal that is common doesn't have an input or output. So in common emitter, we exclude the emitter, then the input will be the base, the output will be the collector. In common base, we exclude the base, so the input will be the emitter, the output will be the collector. Okay, so let's see if this is really happening in that, in that case here. Okay, so let's start, for example, by, so let's name these two transistors as Q1 and Q2, usually. When you name a, a transistor, the common convention is Q. So this is Q1, this is Q2, okay? So let's start by Q1. Let's check where is the input, where is the output, okay? So this is the input signal here, V signal. And really, you know, the input current is going into the base. So let's call this base one, okay? And this is the only, you know, uh, amplifier that has an input at the base is a common emitter. So for sure, for sure, Q1 represents a common emitter amplifier. And we're gonna 
improve more or you know, improve more this 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 mutation. So the input is at the base, okay, which is basically the input of the whole circuit as well because it's coming from the signal, the input signal. So where is the output? Can we say the output is at the so we have two options either the emitter or the collector we don't have other options. So for the emitter here, the emitter is connected to a you know a, a capacitor, then a ground. So if you talk here, if you put here the output, this is wrong of course, but let's assume for a moment that the output is uh, you know uh, at the emitter, then in EC this this this, this uh, capacitor will be short, so the output will be zero all the time. Even if the input is one million volts, you know, the output is zero. So of course that doesn't, it's not correct. Okay, so it's just control Z. Yes. Okay, so we don't have other options. So the output must be here. So this is VO1. So here is V input equal to V input one. And here is V output one. Okay, now Q2. Q2, so the first stage is a, the first transistor, you know, is a common emitter. Let's now prove that Q2 represent a part of a circuit that is really common base, okay? So we know it's if it's a common base or a collector or emitter based on the locations of the input and the outputs, okay? So for the, uh, the input now, okay, so this transistor is not Q2, is not connected to any source. So it looks like it receives its input from another stage, right? So, and also look here, the collector of Q1 is basically the emitter. They are the same terminal, short circuit. C1 is equal to E2, or collector one is connected to emitter two. And remember, Collector one has V output one. So basically, V output one is basically V input two. These are equivalent. V output one is equal to V input two. Very good. Now, where is the output? We have two options again. Since the input is at the emitter, we left off with C2 or B2. Let's check B2. Also strong, but let's check it. So this is B2, base two. And AC, this guy, the capacitor will be short. And if the capacitor is short, then the base will be connected to ground all the time. So even if the input is a million volt, the output will be zero all the time. And there is no amplification. So of course, that's not the case. And now we have only one option, which is the collector, collector two. And then, you know, it's, it's really clear from the load. Look at the load here. The load, our load is connected to what? Connected to C2, through a capacitor. Okay, so it was really clear from about, you know, just to make it much more clear for you guys. Okay, so look now, the input of the circuit is at, Q1, the very first input. And the, the output of the whole circuit is at C2, which is on the load here, okay? So it looks like, yeah, they are uh, somewhere, some way, uh, sort of somehow cascaded, okay? But since it's not clear, we're gonna call it cascode, okay? Okay, let's do the analysis now for the DC. For the DC, we're gonna make some assumptions because it's really a complex circuit, okay? But it's based on, you know, some things that we already, we already, you know, studied or analyzed or proved to be good uh, assumption in other, you know, uh, examples, okay? So the first assumption here is that uh, the base current is very small. And this is usually the case. Usually, when you when you are working as an amplifier, you you, you remember, guys, we said that if you are working as an amplifier, you must be in the active region, and in the active region, usually IB is very small. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, assume that 
the base currents are very small, IB1, IB2 are very small. But how much is small? I mean, are they zero, for example? Usually when we say small or big, we relate to something else. There is another reference here. So we're gonna do that for this currency, I1, I2, I3. And here is IB1 or IB2, I'm sorry. Here is IB1, okay? So we're gonna say, basically when we say so, that means that IB2 is much smaller than I2. So I1 here is branched. I1 is going into two branches, divided into two branches, IB2 and I2. So if IB2 is much smaller than I2, then we can say that I1 approximately equal to I2. This is very important. And now IB1, I2 by itself will also be branched into IB1 and IB2. So again, when we say IB2 is small, that means, uh, I'm sorry, IB1, not IB2. So this is basically IB2 here. And now for IB1, when we say IB1 is small, that means that IB1 is much smaller than I3. So based on that, we can approximate that I1 and I2 and I3 are just equal. So based on that, I1 approximately equal to I2, approximately equal to I3. And what does that mean? That means that all the resistors R1, R2, R3 are in series. That means by itself, R1, R2, R3 are in series connection. This is R1, this is R2, this is R3. And that will make the, you know, the analysis you know, really easy. Really easy. Very small assumption. And by the way, we did this assumption before. When, when we studied the voltage divider circuit, this is basically a voltage divider circuit, but we have now three, three resistors in, instead of two because we have two transistors. So there is a, there is a resistor that is you know, common between two stages of two transistors, which is R2. R2 is, is part of the voltage divider circuit of the Q2 and also part of the voltage divider circuit of Q1. So we don't need to put two resistors, just one is, is enough. Okay, now, when we say that R1, R2, R3 are, you know, in series, then for sure we can say that VB1, which is the voltage at that point, let's now do it red, for example, this point, VB1. So VB1 equal to voltage divider, VCC, multiplied by this resistor R3 over the you know the summation of the whole resistors R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay. This is really good. Can we get uh, VB, VB2? Yes, it's the same way. VB2, let's show it on the on the drawing here. It is VB2. Same, VCC, but now it's two resistor, R2 plus R3. Over the summation again, R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, guys. Yeah, what else? When we solve for a DC, we must determine, you know, IC, IB, and uh, IE, and VC to check, you know, that we are really working in the active region. We are working, in, this number will lead to you to the active. So I'm gonna just calculate, but you can verify on me with VC. I'm gonna just calculate IC, you know, the currents, IC1, IB1, IE1, IC2, IB2, IB2, uh, IE2, okay? Now, you know, uh, we have here a very good characteristic of that circuit is that the collector one is basically a meter two. So where is IC1? Here is IC1. 
going into collector one. Where is I E2? Here is I E2 going out of E2. So from that circuit, I E2, I'm sorry, I C1 equal to I E2. Another approximation that we usually do is that axiom alpha approximately equal to one. So based on that, alpha one and alpha two. So these two transistors are matched. So you have the same beta as you see here. Beta is 100 for both. And they have the same alpha. This is another assumption. Okay. So if alpha is just one, then IC1 can be said to be I equal to I E1. And if alpha two is also one, then we can say that I C2 approximately equal to I E2. But I C1 is equal to I E2. Then all, you know, the currents I C, I E, one, two are just equal. So based on that, I C1 equal to I E1 equal to I C2 equal to I B2. And of course, since all the ICs and since beta is the same for both transistors and the IC are the same for both transistors, then IB is also the same. So IB1 equal to IB2. So just calculate one of these, okay? If you calculate IB, one or two, then you multiply by 100, you get all the ICs and the IEs. IC1, IC2, IE1, IE2. If you calculate IC1, then you just have IE1, IC2, IE2, and divide by 100, you get IB1 and I2, and IB2. How to do that? This is very easy. So again, each time we do that, we assume that since we are in active region, that VBE1 equal to 0.7, okay? So what is the relation between VB1 and uh, VBE1, okay? And VE here. VE1. So VE1, I'm going to write it in because this is a key to determine the, you know, the currents. VE1, or let's say that VBE1 is equal to VB1 minus VE1. The voltage difference between two points is basically the, the, diff, is the voltage of the first point minus the voltage of the second point. So VBE1 is basically between VBE, uh, VB and VBE. VBE1 is 0.7. And what is VB1? Here is it. So VCC, R3, R1 plus R2 plus R3 minus uh, VE1. 0.7 is constant, known. VCC is known, 20. R3 is known, 5 kilo ohms. R1 is known, 51. R2 is known, 3 kilo. R3 is known as 5 kilo ohms, okay? So the only unknown here is VE1. So you can calculate VE1. Once you get VE1, here it is. Look, here is IE1. IE1 is flowing in RE, okay? So IE1 is equal to VE1 minus zero over RE1. So it's flowing from that point to the ground. So the voltage difference between the two points divided by the resistance. The voltage difference between the two points is basically the voltage of the resistor, RE1, okay? V1 is known from that equation. RE1 is known, 0.5 kilo ohms, zero is constant. <laughs> then you get IE1. Once you get IE1, this is basically equal to IC1, equal to IC2, equal to IE2. And from that, IB1 equal to IB2 equal to IE1 over beta plus one, 101, or 100. You can just approximate it, that's fine. Since the alpha is approximately equal to. Okay, this is a DCNS. I'm gonna leave the calculations for you and now going directly to you know the AC analysis, which is really interesting because from this the AC analysis, you're gonna see really that this is just like a scaled amplifier. You have a stage and another stage, and the output of the first stage is basically the input. Very clear way, very visible way. 
Okay, so let's do the AC analysis. So let's copy and paste the circuit. So in EC, we cancel all uh, the DC sources. If you have a current source, make it open. If you have a voltage source, make it short. If you have a capacitor, make it short. So we're gonna short this capacitor here. And if you do that, base one, which is here, will be connected to ground. I'm gonna connect short this capacitor as well, and short this capacitor, okay? So this DC source is basically something like this. So when you short it, it will be like this. So it's like you connect this point to the ground. And now look at R1 terminals. So R1 terminal, this terminal is, is ground now, and this terminal is also ground. So it's like, it's shorted. Look at RE, RE, this terminal is ground, and this terminal is also ground now. So it's also, it's also shorted. Remember, this is a common emitter. This is a common base. Why? Because remember, guys, there are two equivalent circuits that are equivalent. <laughs> so the BGT has two for the equivalent circuit in EC, the small signal of equivalent circuit or model for the BGT. It's actually two models, and they are all equivalent. They, they are equivalent. You can you, you can use any of them. They are both, you know. But uh, if you have a common base, we mentioned that if you use a special shape or special, you know. Uh, you know, uh, equivalent circuit that is really helpful with common base, the circuit analysis will be easier, but it will lead to the same solution, of course, because they are just equivalent. So here we have a common emitter and a common base here. So we're gonna use the equivalent circuit for the common emitter, the one that we usually do, but we're gonna use uh, another shape, another uh, version, basically, for the common base that is more, uh, easier to use with common bits. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do one in red, which is you know the one for the common emitter. Here is beta, IB, and call it IB one. And here is base one, collector one, emitter one, and here is I by. One. R by one here is equal to R by two. Why? Because R by, remember, is equal to VT over IB. But IB one is equal to IB two. So uh, VT over IB one is equal to VT over IB two. So R by one is equal to R by two. I'm gonna do it for you. Why? Because IB is one equal to IB is two. Let's do the second, or both basically, the second uh, uh, equivalent circuit for the common base in which we do base at the bottom here like this, emitter here, collector here, and call it emitter two, collector two, base two. And here is RE. RE small is just R by over beta for beta plus one. Make it R by over beta, this will make the solution much more easier here. So RE small, RE2, of course. And RE2 small is equal to R by two over the beta, okay? So uh, since R by is one is equal to R by two, I'm gonna just write R by, and beta is also the same for both transistors. Beta one is equal to beta two, basically. So just the beta, okay? Okay, now let's connect the rest of the circuit. Let's do that in another color, like uh, black, for example. Okay, so let's start here by base one. Here is, I'm sorry, this is two here. This is one, collector one, 
emitter one. So let's start by base one. So base one, it's connected to three branches, you know, this one, this guy, and this guy. So between base one, uh, R, R3 is between base one and the ground. This is R3. So this is bulb. R2 is between base one and also ground. Remember, this is ground now. So R2. And then you have R signal and V signal. And that's it for base one, nothing else is connected to it. Now in meter one, in meter one is just connected to ground. So just make it ground like this. We finish this that guy. Collector one, collector one is basically a meter two. Here is collector one. Here is a meter two, just connect them together. That's it, very easy. Base two, base two is connected to ground. Here is base two, ground. And just, you know, mark it. Collector two has two branches, this branch and that branch. So it's, uh, it has RCs in the ground. There is one here. And then, RL, of course, this, this capacitor is also short. I forget to do that. And then another branch, which is RL on the ground. And before you go, where is V input one? Where is V output two? V input two, V output two. So let's do that, for example, in green. So V input one, Is here, which is basically the input of the circuit, the whole circuit. And remember again, the input is different from the signal. You, you have AV and the GV, there are two metrics that we calculate usually. AV, which is just the voltage gain, and GV, overall voltage gain, okay? In the overall voltage gain GV, we include the signal. But AV is more of an, a little bit intrinsic, it's, you know, property of the circuit. So we don't include our signal and the signal in that one. Okay, where is V output one? If you go back here, we said that V output one is between the collector, here it is, collector one and the ground. Here is the collector one. So here is V output one. Where is the input two? We said here that the input two is basically equal to uh, the output one between the emitter and the ground, and the emitter two is just the collector two. So this is the input two, and the output one is basically the input two. Where is the output? The output is basically the voltage across the resistor RL. Here it is. V output. And V output is basically V output two as well. Okay, V output. Now we can really go and, you know, calculate all the metrics that we usually do for any circuit like this. And before we go, you know, we should see where is the two stages. So here is the first stage. Let's do that with another color. So here is the first stage. Stage one, common emitter. And look, the output of stage one is basically the input of stage two. Stage two, common base. And really, they are cascaded. 
Although in DC it wasn't clear at all, okay? But in EC, they are, it's really visible, it's really clear that they are just cascaded amplifiers. And by the way, when they start thinking about that, the original circuit was, was really cascaded. You have common emitter and there is a wire and another common base and there is a wire that just to connect, uh, you know, the, the output from the collector of the common uh, emitter to the input at the uh, emitter of the common base. But from that original shape, we could reduce it because again, for example, for the voltage divider circuit, you know, you can have a resistor between that can be, you know, like R2 for the, the Q1 and or Q2 and like an R1 for, uh, trans for transistor Q1, okay? So the original shape of this circuit, it was really just like, you know, the common emitter, common emitter, not the stage amplifier, or the common emitter, common collector, multi stage amplifier that we studied before in the last lectures. But they could reduce it and make it more compact because if you, of course, if you save some resistors, you know, then you decrease the area of our consumption of your circuit and the cost, of course, okay? Now we can do many stuff. So let's assume that the requirement here is to, to determine uh, AV naught, AV1, AV2, AV, and GV, R input, R out. And I'm gonna start by R input and R out, okay? So where is R input? R input is basically the, uh, the resistor between the terminals of V input. Where is V input? Here is VM, this guy. So we're gonna look from that same, same as, you know. So here is our input, okay? And if you do that, remember, when you have two meshes, two circuits, that is common in one point, like a ground, for example, then they are isolated. So this part of the circuit, is isolated from that part and from that part. So just to forget about the, you know, the middle here and the last part. And our input number one will be just R2, barrel R3, barrel R bar. Okay, that looks good. Now, RO. For RO, it is the resistance seen by the load. So you should remove the load and look, imagine there is a VX and IX, you know, a voltage source and the current uh, that produce a current called IX. And VX over IX should be RO. And they cancel any other source that is depend independent, like V signal. Okay. So if you do that, let's do it very quick. So we're gonna remove our L and the board VX. So the imaginary source, it's, it's an imaginary source, you know, it's, uh, it's not a real one, it's like a model. And but the rest is the same, except that we're gonna remove or short, cancel basically, this signal. I'm sorry, here is, you know, uh, alpha I E two. This is really important. And here is beta I B is one. It is R by, and where is I B is one? I B is one is here. This is I B is one. Okay, here is R three. R2, R signal, and we cancel this signal. How to cancel a source? Make it short, okay? This is IE2. It's going out, okay? Coming out of E2 is C1, base one. That's emitter one, which is connected to ground. And that's C2. And RO is equal to VX over IX. You need to know 
this relation vx over x. Okay. So from that loop here, we can reduce that part into R by and the better parallel equivalent of R2, R3, R signal, because now R3, R2 are in parallel and R signal become better with them because we can set the source three signal. So I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, draw all the circuit, just this bar thing. And actually they are isolated because they are con connected using one point, which is like not, not two points. So here is R by, here is IB one, and this, this resistance is R signal, parallel with R two, parallel with R three. If we do a loop here, look, IB is one, R by, uh, plus I B is one, R signal, parallel with R2, parallel with R3 equal to zero. Take I base one as a common factor. So I base one, R by plus R signal plus R2 plus R3, all that is equal to zero. So you have here the multiplication between two uh, terms. So either both are zeros or just one of them are zeros. So we have two options. Either I base one is equal to zero, or the other term R by, R by plus uh, R signal, barrel R2, barrel R3 equal to zero. Okay, so let's continue another. So before we go uh, to another, you know, just look at here, R by one or two cannot equal to zero because R by is VT 26 millivolt and the I base we know, we should be calculating, it's, it's not zero, okay? If it's zero, then the, the circuit is not working. It's not, you know, it's not biased, okay? So we know for sure that does, this cannot happen because R by has a value, R signal has a value, R2 has a value, R3 has a value. So that doesn't equal to zero. So the only option we left off is I base one is equal to zero. If I base one is equal to zero, then beta I base one equal to zero. So that source is open circuit. And if that source is open circuit, then IE two, which is equal to beta I base one from that loop here, you have the same current, is also equal to zero. And if IE2 is equal to zero, then this source is open circuit. Okay, alpha, so alpha. So this leads to that, and that leads to that, and that leads to alpha IE2 equal to zero. Then we lift off with that. Same bit branch, VX, IX. RC. So basically RO, which is VX over IX is equal to RC. So our input is R2 parallel R3. R2 here is, is capital. R3 R by and the RO is RC. So we did that. We did that. Now let's get all the voltage gains. Okay, so let's do another. Uh, okay, so let's start by AV1. AV1 is basically VO1 over VN1, okay? So uh, VN1 is a voltage between that node and the ground, okay? So it's a voltage across R2 or R3 or R by, okay? So the voltage across R by is basically I base one multiplied by R by. So V input one is equal to R by multiplied by I base one. Good. How about V output one? V2 is the voltage between that point and the ground. That point is basically C1 or E1. Okay. 
So it is the voltage between or over the de dependent current source or this resistor, R by over beta. Of course, we don't know the voltage across the, the dependent current source, but we know the voltage across this uh, resistor, Re2, which is basically equal to R by 2 over beta 2, but beta 1 is equal to beta 2 equal to beta, and R by 1 is equal to R by 2 equal to R by. So V2 is equal to the current across that resistor multiplied by the resistor. But remember the directions. So VO2 is bottom to up from the ground to E2 or C1. This current IE2 is flowing in that way. So the voltage drop will be going down opposite to VO2. So the voltage is basically minus IE2 multiplied by R by over beta, okay? So EV1 equal to VO1 is, uh, I'm sorry, this is VO1, VO1, minus IE2 R by over beta. And VM1 is R by, I base one. So R by will go with R by. And uh, what is the relation between I E2 and I base one? Look, I E2 is flowing uh, in that direction here. So it's basically the same current of, of, the, of the dependent current source. So I E2 is equal to beta I base one, okay? Beta I base one. So if we, you know, substitute here, so minus beta I base one over beta I base one. This guy will go with this guy, beta with beta, minus one. Minus one. So uh, the common in metal stage doesn't give, you know, uh, amplification just give one. So again, the, the true benefit of this circuit is beyond the, you know, the, the, the topics or, you know, the cover, coverage of this, uh, the scope of this course, okay? But we still have, you know, gain. Although common emitter doesn't give us gain, it's again just one or minus one because of the field shift. But the common base stage will give us, you know, some amplification, okay? So let's do AV2. Number two, AV2, which is basically VO2 over VN2, okay? VO2 is the voltage across RL or RC, okay? So I'm gonna draw the equivalent of that part only of the circuit, so. You have RL and RC are in parallel. So you can imagine them like this. Here is uh, I, uh, alpha I E2. I'm gonna, I will not draw the series of the circuit, but here is RL, parallel RC, and here is VO. So remember the current is flowing in that way, and the current is alpha I E2. Okay, but it will make a voltage opposite to the output. The output is from bottom to up, from the ground to uh, this, this, this node, but the voltage drop that uh, alpha IE2 will do in RL barrel R, uh, RC will be from uh, uh, top to down, opposite. So V2 is minus alpha IE2 RL barrel RC. What is V input two? Remember, V input two is basically the output one. So we have it already. It was this one here. So minus alpha E two R by over beta. So E V two equal to V output two minus alpha I E two R L barrel R C over minus alpha I E two R by and you know the, the denominator of the denominator is just a numerator, so beta will will become here. Okay, 
minus will go with minus, alpha E will go with alpha E, okay, and we end up with V input two, I'm sorry, with E V two equal to, you can approximate alpha equal to one, that's fine. So it's beta RL barrel RC over R bar. This is usually larger than one, usually, okay? Of course, it depends on the values of R L, R C, and R bar, but usually it's larger than one. So with zero, it's still a gain. Okay. So now the overall gain, or no, A V first, yeah. A V is basically A V uh, one multiplied by A V two. Okay. So what is A V one? It's just minus one. What is A V two? Is beta R L barrel RC over R by, so it's basically minus beta RL RC over R by, okay? So that's AV. If you substitute, you have the values. It will be greater than one. The fourth thing that we're gonna do is AV note. And if you guys recall, we usually do AV note in two ways. We kind of start from scratch, uh, and the AV note is the intrinsic gain of the circuit with no signal connected, with no load connected, okay? So you can just remove the R signal and, uh, and V signal, and remove also you know, the load and the calculate the gain, okay? Uh, but you can do it also in that way. Since you already have a V, okay, you can say it's equal to limit RL approaches infinity of a V. So in that equation, so here is a V, so limit RL approaches infinity minus beta over R by, and I'm gonna, you know, substitute for the barrel combination. So it's RL, multiplied by RC over RL plus RC. You can do it in that way, limit RL approaches infinity. And here is uh, beta over R by, then divide by RL. So RC one plus RC over RL. If we put RL equal to infinity here, this will be zero. So basically EV naught will be equal to minus Beta or C over R bar. Okay, that's A V naught. Finally, G V. The overall voltage gain, in which we include both, we include R L and R signal. So E V is the gain without including R signal. Uh, uh, A V naught is the gain without including R signal and R L. G V is the overall gain. By including R signal, by including, you know, the RL. And we know the equation for it. Let me grab it very quick here. So GV is equal to AV, R input, over R input plus R signal. We know R input, we determine it. R signal is a given. AV is just, you know, uh, determined from number three. Then you know. GV. Okay, guys, that's basically, you know, the cascode amplifier. It's really interesting circuit, especially when you, you know, analyze it in DC and in AC when you look at, you know, the equivalent circuit and see really that, you know, the, uh, it's a circuit delivers a, a voltage on other circuits. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.